Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about some coffee shots which is mapped with CISSP, ISSAP, cryptography and network security topics. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on ISSAP. I already made some few coffee shots in past so you can check that video also. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so we have a first coffee shot. Which of the following is a correct statement of SMIME? SMIME is basically means secure multipurpose internet mail extension. So option A, SMIME use hashing algorithm for message integrity, which is true, which is achieved through SHA. Public key certificate for uh, message authentication, which is also true. Digital signature to provide the non repudiation of origin that is also true. So, so far A look very accurate. Option B is SMIM use public key certificate for message authentication and digital signature to provide the non repudiation of origin. But where is the message integrity here? So, in B that option is missing. Option C SMIM use only public key certificate for message authentication which is wrong. And D saying SMIM use encryption algorithm to encrypt the data. That is true. Okay. Hashing algorithm for message integrity. That is true. Public key certificate for message authentication. That is true. And digital signature to provide the non repudiation of origin. That is also true. So A is part of the D. That is why I am going with the answer D for Delta because SMIM use RSA for the key exchange and it basically use Elgamal and now we have AES for the encryption. Okay, so it offer the data signing and data con uh, encryption both. So let's move to the next coffee shot. So which of the following is the correct statement of SSH? So option A SSH encrypt the data it transfer which is true and provide authentication using a password public key based method that is also true and it also offered a key hash for a integrity protection which is actually true. Option B, SSH encrypt data transfer, provide authentication using a password. Private based method, there is nothing called as a private based method and it offer a keyed hash for the integrity. So because of this, B eliminate. Option C is SSH uses a keyed hash for integrity protection only, which is not true because SSH used for the remote administration and whatever the channel is basically established between the client and server, it is encrypted. So C removed. SSH only offer authentication services, which is not a true statement. So very close option, which is look like answer is basically A, A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay. So what is the most appropriate security measure security architect? Okay. Security architect can consider for protecting the resources in the enterprise. So we're talking from a security architect point of view, not from a solution or implementer point of view. Option A, understand the frequency and characteristics of attacks against the organization computing resources, which is true, which is also like a, a data flow diagram and attack surface analysis. Option B, identifying security policy problems, which is also true because it is more from a governance point of view. But here the scope here is we're talking about protecting a resource and B is talking about the governance. Third is understand the frequency and characteristics of attack against the network. But why we only limited to the network? We're talking about the overall enterprise and option B, D, deciding what event to send to SIM, but it is more from the monitoring point of view. So D is eliminated. C is eliminating because of the network. B is a governance issue. So the most important clause we have is understand the frequency and characteristics of attack against the organization computing resources. And according to that, you can basically apply the security strategy. So as a security architect, I always recommend to review the frequencies and attack surface analysis. And according to that, you can define the security measure. So let's move to the next coffee shot. You are designing a network security architecture for an organization. You need to place network monitoring solution for educate visibility and ensure we can capture the traffic without any downtime. Which of the following is the best solution we can suggest? Option A configure span port. Now, if I say this is basically a switch we have. 
and in which we have a one port which is connected with the system. So this port is basically mirror with other ports. But problem is that, so we have a system A, we have a system B, we have a system C. So when system A is sending a data, this port send the one copy to this port. So by this way, it can able to capture. But if the switch is down, everything is down. So A is removed because we're talking about educate visibility and ensure we can capture traffic without any downtime. Option B, use passive tap. This is a next separate dedicated device that we use. And the best thing is that it doesn't require power. It, it doesn't require power. Okay, so it can be a good option. C, it is saying use active tap, but active tap, of course, required electricity and, you know, then only it basically required the monitoring. Again, mirroring the port can be happening in the A, B, C. So configuring a span port, it is a logical solution and having a dedicated tap device, it is a good solution. But in the tap also, we have a two type of tap. Passive tap doesn't require power, whereas the active, active tap required the power. So if I'm considering about the downtime issues, I will definitely go for the B. Use passive tap because passive tap doesn't require any kind of a power. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. So very good question. Currently, the IT management must identify and assess vulnerabilities across many disparate hardware and software platform. Fine. They need to prioritize these vulnerabilities and remediate those that pose the greatest risk. Fine. But when there is there are so many fix with each being scored using a different scale, how can the IT manager convert this mounting of vulnerability data into actionable information? So option A, threat modeling, but threat modeling is all about scenario analysis of a threat we perform in the design stage. Here, vulnerability is already there and threat modeling never help us to prioritize the thing. So be removed. CVE, common vulnerability exposure. So it is basically the ID which is assigned to the unique, uh, it is a unique value which is assigned to the vulnerability. So that is not a thing. NVD is the website which maintain the information about the vulnerabilities and everything. So D removed. So only close option is basically CVSS. So common vulnerability scoring system, collect the data and based on the data, we try to prioritize the things. So when you're preparing for ISSAP, you must sure that you, you need to have a very good understanding of the CVSS. Okay, so CVSS is basically a score matrix by which we try to prioritize the vulnerability based on the score. Okay, we have a base score, something like that. So in this case, I'm going with the answer B. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, it looked like a cryptography attack. Which attack is executed by measuring the exact execution time and power the crypto device required to perform encryption or decryption? In this question, the keyword is measuring the time, power, it means we're talking about hardware compute and all that. It looked like a side channel attack, but I can see in the four option, there's no side channel attack. So option A is differential crypt analysis. Okay. Option B is linear crypt analysis. Linear crypt analysis is also called as a plain text attack. Okay. Known plain text attack. Remember that. Okay. Known plain text attack. Don't get confused. Okay. So linear crypt analysis is also called as a known plain text attack which use linear approximation to describe the behavior of the block cipher. Okay, so in the linear crypt analysis, we have a knowledge of plain text and cipher text both. So from there, we're trying to find the key. Birthday attack where we have a two different data have a same hash value. So hash collision is there. So it is used in a hash collision. In chosen cipher test attack, we basically have access to cipher text only. So we generate the plain text, encrypt the plain text and compare the that particular output with the chosen ciphertext. So D is removed. So another name of the side channel attack is also called as a differential crypt analysis. Okay, so don't get confused. That's why the answer is A. Let's move to the next coffee shot. In which attack set of pair of plain text and corresponding ciphertext, one can obtain bit of information and increase the amount of data will usually give a higher probability of success. Differential crypt analysis, as you know, it's a side channel attack. So A removed. Question talking about pair of plain text and ciphertext we have. Birthday attack is a hash collision. In chosen ciphertext attack, we choose ciphertext as a mechanism to process through a system and produce a uh, plain text. But here they, they're already saying they have access to the plain text and ciphertext. But I cannot see a attack called plain text attack or known plain text attack. 
so another name of the known plain text attack is called as a linear cryptanalytics that's why the answer is b so this is all from my side team if you find this video useful do share in network do share your feedback in the comment section and do let me know what is the next video should i make it thank you for watching my video goodbye bye